Okay, we were uh, talking about projection of a point minus c onto the subspace. So the problem was I wanted to minimize <coughs> such that ax equals to 0. And uh, the solution that was given to us is Yeah, that was the solution. And the picture I want you to have in mind is this is my subspace AX equals to 0. Here is the origin. Here is my vector negative C. And here is the projection X star. And remember the necessary condition, or in the case of, because this is a convex function, over a convex set, the sub necessary and sufficient condition for optimality is gradient of f x star transpose x minus x star is greater than or equal to 0 for all x in capital X. So I need to look at all these directions d. Okay, so I'm going to call this d. This is where we 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 stopped in the previous lecture. So let's continue. So I look at, so I'm standing at x star, I'm looking at this entire plane, ax equal to 0. So I have the directions d going in all the directions on this plane. I want to figure out what exactly does this d satisfy. So we know that ax equals to 0. I also know that ax star equals to 0. So this means that ad is equal to 0, because remember d is x minus x star. So any direction d must satisfy ad equals to 0. OK. And then gradient of fx star. What is gradient of fx star? It's c plus x, c plus x star. So that is c minus c plus A transpose, A, A transpose inverse AC. So that is just this is my gradient of Fx star. First of all, my question is, do we even know that this x star lies on this subspace? So is ax star equals to 0? Is this satisfied? Let's check. Uh, I mean, this is just a sanity check. I know that it lies on the plane, but let's just do a sanity check. So ax star equals to a minus ac plus a A transpose A A transpose inverse A C. So this is equal to 0. So A X star is equal to 0. So at least for the first part that is X star lies on this plane that is completely correct. 
now I need to prove that gradient of fx star transpose d is equal to or greater than equal to 0 for all directions d that satisfied ad equals to 0. Is that true? Let's try to check. Gradient of fx star transpose d equals to c transpose a transpose a a transpose inverse a d is this what does what is the sign of this particular vector not vector actually it's a scalar because we are taking an inner product between two vectors what's the sign of this Remember, all the d, d has to satisfy ad equals to 0. So we have this ad here. So this whole thing is equal to 0, which is, of course, greater than equal to 0. So this condition is also satisfied. Okay, so given a convex problem, uh, we have a convex function over a convex set. Somebody told me, somebody came in my dreams and told me that this is the x star. How do I know that this is the, the, the person who came in my dream is correct or, or incorrect? Well, if the person is correct, then this must be satisfied uh, for all x and x because this is the necessary and sufficient conditions for optimality. So if that must be satisfied, I have to do two sanity check because somebody came up, came in my dream and gave me that x star. So I don't even know if x star lies on the plane. So I did the first sanity check and I realized that, okay, x star lies on the plane, on this subspace. And then this condition needs to be satisfied. And it turns out that that condition is also satisfied for all possible d. This condition is also satisfied as a result of which x star is indeed the optimal solution for that particular problem. Any question? Yes. Is the gradient uh, f of x star always pointing to the minima, the minima, the minima, the minima, the minima, is the gradient always pointing to? Good point. So in this particular problem, the gradient is always going to point, I don't know, the, where is the function increasing? I think the function is increasing downwards, right? This is where the gradient of f of x star is going to look like. So it's pointing outwards from the plane, but it's making a 90 degree with the entire plane. Okay, so that's why this inner product is always equal to zero. Any other question? Yes. Uh, so you know the function is increasing in this particular direction. See, C, C plus x square, right? So this is C plus x, that's the distance. And the distance is increasing if I'm going downwards, from the, uh, away from the plane in the opposite direction. So the gradient must be pointing in the direction where the function is increasing. Yeah, I, I was just thinking about this way, that uh, there is like a 3D space. Uh -huh. like AX is like a zero plane. Uh, need not be a zero plane. It could be a line also. And then since that is a quadratic function, uh, right. convex function. Right. Uh, yeah, so you are visualizing it in 3D space, but I am visualizing it in 2D space. I am visualizing it in the, in the space of X only. I don't have a third dimension or I don't have a, 
another dimension. Yeah. Any other question? Okay. Okay, so we have applied this uh, necessary and sufficient condition for optimality on a uh, on a convex function, on, on an optimization of a convex function over a convex set. Uh, so the next topic that I want to talk about is projection. Uh, now remember that whenever we take the gradient descent, so we are going to talk about how do you do gradient descent in the context of this particular uh, class of problems where you have to uh, make sure that you are always within the convex set. So one of the important thing that will come again and again uh, during the algorithm, during the uh, des description of the algorithm is what is known as projection. So remember here we were projecting a vector minus c onto this space, onto this convex set. So this idea of projection is going to come again and again. So I want to talk about projection theorem next. Okay, and then we'll get into the gradient descent methods for, uh, for uh, these kind of problems. Projection theorem. Okay, so here is the idea. So I have X, which is a subset of Rn. It's a closed convex set. And the projection of X is denoted by this. It is argument of norm X minus Z square. Oh, uh, I'll make it Z here. Let's see what this z plus looks like. Okay. <clears throat> By the way, this is known as uh, this is projection of Z onto the set capital X. So I have this uh, this point Z in the space, and I'm going to draw a convex set. So this is my X. This is my X. I have a point Z in the space. I could have a set like this. This is my X, and I have a point Z in the space. And every time I go outside the set, I need to be able to come back into the set. And what's the natural point to come back to? Well, the point that is closest to the point Z in the space. So I want to figure out what is the point within the set capital X, which is closest to this point Z. So in this case, I want to get to this point. In this case, I want to come to this point. And in this case, I want to come to this point. And this point, the point that is closest 
to the point z in the convex set is the projection. Okay, these points are known as projection of z onto the set capital X. Uh, not really. Sometimes it could be within the set, in which case the point is the point itself. The projection is the point itself. Okay. If it is inside the set, then this is equal to the projection itself. Because you no longer have to, uh, like the point, the minimum point in X is the point itself, Z itself, because it lies within the set. So if z is outside, you need to find a point which is closest point to the point z within the set. And if z is inside the set, then the projection is the point itself. Now what is the property that this z plus must satisfy? So there are a few things. Uh, remember that this is also a convex function over a convex set. Okay, So a lot of those properties will also be satisfied here. So here is what the theorem says. For every z in Rn, there exists a unique x star that is projection of z onto x z minus x star transpose x minus x star is greater than or equal to 0 for all x capital X oh this is less than or equal to 0 Right. Okay, so this comes from the sufficient condition for optimality. So this is negative of gradient and transpose x minus x star is less than equal to 0 and this should hold for all x in x. The most important thing to know is that this for every z there is a unique x star. You cannot have other x stars. You will have a unique point within the set which is the projection of that particular point onto the set capital X. What this particular uh, statement is saying, let's look at these vectors. This vector, this is my z minus x star. And then I pick any point within the set. This is my vector x minus x star. What's the angle between z minus x star and x minus x star? It's greater than 90 degree, right? So this is greater than or equal to 90 degrees. In all these cases, here is my x, this is 90 degrees, this is my x, and this is my z minus x, x star, and this is my x minus x star. So in all these cases, you see that the, the, the angle between these two vectors is greater than or equal to 90 degrees. So it's 90 degrees here, it's greater than 90 degrees here and it's greater than 90 degrees here. So the inner product is always going to be non-positive. It can be 0. So this is equal to 0 here. The inner product is 0 because the two vectors are orthogonal. In this case, the inner product is negative. 
In this case, the inner product is negative. And no matter what point x you pick, that is going to be the case. OK, that's the second statement there. Any question on projection? Yes. What is the intuition behind the um, minimization of the least squares Euclidean norm? Uh, I mean, that's just how the projection is defined. This is the definition of projection. So the, pro the way projection is defined is what's the, minimum, what's the point within the set which has minimum distance. Now the distance is Euclidean distance. Yes. Right. Uh, x bar, and this is my z, and this is z minus x bar. That's right. So if we take a point over here, then the angle is uh, x is right. No, then you have the wrong projection. Why? It should always be, if it is like this, if it is like this, if this is your ax equals to 0 or whatever, ax equal to b, then it should always be 90 degree. That's the point that is closest to the point Z. If you make it like this, then that's not the closest point. The point, the closest point is always going to be perpendicular. Okay, which is what I'm trying to draw here. Okay. There's one more thing that I want, one more definition that I want to talk about. Uh, which is uh, the definition of a stationary point. So in the case of unconstrained uh, minimization, the stationary point was defined as the point where gradient of fx equals to zero or fx bar. So x bar is stationary. This is just the definition. x bar is stationary if and only if the gradient of f at x bar vanishes. It's equal to 0. That's the definition of a stationary point in the case of unconstrained minimization. In the case of uh, convex set, optimization over convex set, x bar is stationary if and only if gradient of fx bar transpose x minus x star is greater than or equal to 0 for all x in capital X. That's just the definition of stationary point. And it will become useful in a few minutes. We'll uh, go over why we need to know the definition of stationary point. That is only for uh, optimization over convex set. OK. Let's go into optimization now. I have a function. I want to optimize that function over a convex set. So here is the picture I want you to have in mind. So I have a function that looks something like this. It could be a non-convex function. So this is a non-convex function. And I have a convex set. Something like this. Uh, I don't know how I should draw it. But basically, this function is, this is the 2D space. This is a convex set in the 2D space. And this function is the third dimension. OK, so I'm trying to draw the picture you had in mind. <laughs> but I have clearly failed. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe I should, uh, OK, here is what I will do. This is my space. This is my f of x. This is x1. This is x2. 
and I want to draw the set. So this is my convex set capital X in the X1, X2 plane. And I want to minimize this function in this over this particular set. With what? The function doesn't intersect? The function doesn't need to intersect, right? The function could be like, this is my convex set. Actually, this is a convex set. And my function is something on top of this set. It doesn't have to intersect. Right? OK. So now I'm going to uh, look at this particular set. I'm standing at x, k. I want to hop to xk plus 1. I want to take one step to xk plus 1. Uh, and let's assume that the gradient is in this direction. What are the feasible directions from xk? So what are the directions in which I can take a step? Well, technically, it's all of these directions, right? With gradient of fx, uh, maybe I should make it negative gradient. Yeah, negative gradient of fxk is in that particular direction. And so these are all the feasible directions, so that if I take a step in any of these directions, as long as the step is sufficiently small, I won't go outside the set. So one thing that you will notice is set of feasible directions are x minus xk for all x in capital X. This is my potential dk, potential directions d. If I'm standing at xk, which all are the directions I can move? Well, I can pick any point in the set, capital X. I take the difference x minus xk. That can give me a feasible direction. The second thing to notice is once again, if I look at f of x plus maybe alpha d, what I get is approximately equal to So I want to pick a direction d so that my this value is lower than f of x. Now alpha is a positive number. So I must have this particular term should be less than 0. So that if I take a small step in the direction d, then my function value will be lower than the value of function at x. OK, so these are the two intuitions. The same intuition that worked for unconstrained, we will start with the same intuition here as well. So I want to, I'm standing here. This is my convex set. This classroom is my convex set. And I want to take a step in a direction where the value of the function will be lower than the function value at the original point where I was standing. OK. What, what should we do? What do you think we should do? So we are faced with this issue. I want to find the direction d. So here are my possible direction, d1, d2, d3, d4, d5. And then there is a d6, which is negative gradient of fxk. Where do you think we should take a step? As long as the angle between the gradient and the direction you are going to go is smaller than 90 degrees, is more than zero, but if you want to do it faster, then you just uh, go along the gradient direction. Along the gradient direction. So I can take d5, I can take d2. Yeah. I shouldn't be taking d4, d3, and d1 because it's it's going uh, not in the negative direction. Okay, perfect. 
So I want to make sure that I'm taking either D5, D6, or D2, because they are sort of going in the direction. They'll, they'll satisfy this particular condition. Gradient of Fx transpose D is less than zero. Okay, let's, uh, let's continue with this thought. What else? What else should we do? Let me draw another diagram. Now this is my xk, and this is my negative gradient fxk. What are the feasible directions? The feasible directions are this way, this way, this way, this way. So let me again give it a name, d1, d2, d3, d4. Which direction should I go to? Anything other than D2? Like you're trying to stay within the 90 degree? <clears throat> right, so the only, I want to make sure that my direction is picked in a way so that this term is strictly negative. Okay, so which of the directions will have a strictly negative? So gradient of Fx will be in the opposite. So remember this is negative. So the, this is my gradient of Fxk. And that is negative gradient of fxk. So somebody said I should be taking d1. Who said the d1? Okay, why do you want to take d1? Uh, it should be uh, less than zero and uh, it's not outside the set. It's not outside the set. So he wants to take d1 because uh, d1 inner product with negative gradient is, or d1 inner product with the gradient is actually negative because this is making an obtuse angle with the gradient. So I should be taking this d1 direction uh, because the, my, I know that the value of the function will be minimized if I go in this direction. And the other reason what, why he said he wants to take d1 is so that if I slide in this direction, I don't go outside the set. Okay, so those are the two reasons why he wants to take d1. Any other thoughts? Yes. yes question. Okay, question, yeah. I mean, you know, if I, if I go in the descent direction, if I go in the negative fxk direction, then I reach this point, right? At the next time step, I'll reach that point. So, we are going in that direction because we know it, the function is going to minimize. Yeah, because the gradient descent is taking me to that. So the gradient descent told me I need to go there, and I started moving in that direction. Now I have reached the end point. Now I have to figure out whether I need to move this side or I need to move this side or which, which area am I supposed to move in. Okay, so okay. the same idea of unconstrained optimization. Yeah, but now you have a constraint. Yeah, so like there we, uh, we have taken uh, D to be like minus capital D. Uh, that's right, capital. that's right. So, so here we just omit that D. For now we are omitting it, we will bring it back in some time. By the end of the class, or maybe by next class, we'll bring it back. Okay, so right now we want to think in a simplistic term. So we are back in 1700s. We have been given this problem by some king, some nobility. I need to solve this minimization problem, and I need to come up with an algorithm. Okay. Right, so simplest algorithm. So yeah. we are moving in that direction because we know it will at least get us to uh, close to minimum. Right. I want to get as close to minimum as possible. Okay, so there are two thoughts that comes to the mind. One is, I'll first move in the direction of the gradient, uh, or negative gradient, but if I move outside the set, then what am I supposed to do? So I took, I picked the value of alpha and I reached this point. This is my xk plus one. Not xk plus one, maybe not xk plus one, but maybe x bar k. So I took a, I, I was standing at xk, I picked the step size alpha in the direction of negative gradient and I reached outside the set. Now what am I supposed to do? Okay. Okay. So one option is to project the point back into the set. What else can I do? I can take a smaller step. Perfect. What else can I do? 
how did they get radian at that point? Which point? Uh, the outside. The outside point? Yeah. Okay. And then? And then uh, find the way back to the set. But why do you need a gradient then? Can we just uh, take the middle point? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like we want to uh, find the uh, find the uh, clo make it closer to the uh, smallest point on the set. Okay, so one idea is uh, find the point within the set, which is which satisfies this particular condition, which satisfies this condition. So that's one option. Find x so that this condition is satisfied. The second option is if by chance we move outside the set, then let's try to project it back onto the set. Okay. So these are the two methods. So we have been able to figure out what people figured out in 1700. Just to take the middle point between these two points, the star point and the end point. Uh, you know, so good, good thought. So he's saying that let's pick the midpoint, but I don't even know if midpoint is inside the set or outside the set. And if it's not in the set, then we take middle point between so, you get so you're using bisection method yeah, yeah. to try to get inside the set. Uh, you can do that, but it's going to increase the computational complexity. Okay? So let's try to talk about the two ideas that we just uh, discussed. Uh, can I erase both sides of the board? Any questions on the, yeah? What does it mean to be like inside or outside of the set? Does this mean that now we might be, if we try to minimize, we might be finding some other minima? Is this, what is, is this set like a, what kind of boundary is? Right, so, so if, if it is a set of this type, it will be of this form. Ax is less than or equal to b. So that kind of set looks like this. And in this case, if you are outside, then what it means is you can have like Ax k, one could be greater than b1 or AXK2 could be greater than B2, or so on. That means that you are outside the set. Does that make sense? Because then you are not inside. So if you are inside the set, then it means that element wise, each of these elements is less than or equal to B1. B, I mean, the corresponding element in B. Why are we, why are we constraining ourselves, though? What is that? mean intuitively? Uh, why are we constraining ourselves? Mm -hmm. Because that's the optimization problem given to us. Now why, why do constrained optimization appear? Because I cannot accelerate my engine in the car beyond a certain, beyond the capacity of the car. So if the optimal solution turns out to be accelerate at 20 miles per hour square, but my engine can only accelerate up to 10 miles per hour square, there's nothing much I can do about it. Right? Or, you know, in the case of a battery, you can only inject 10 amperes of current into the battery. So now you can't inject 12 amperes of the current because that's what turns out to be optimal. So you have physical constraints on the system and you want to make sure that your constraints are met. Okay. Yes? I'm not clear why do you pick D1 over D2? I mean, D2 also satisfies both in, in this part, I mean, I've not drawn it properly, but basically it's almost 90 degrees. So it's kind of zero. Sorry, so uh, mathematically we can go, off, uh, go outside the uh, set, right? Yes. Uh, but there, uh, in, in reality we don't. So we just need to... Uh, right? right, so a lot of the times optimization is being solved on a microprocessor or on some computer. So you can go wherever you want to go. You can have NAN, INF, all of that is possible. But then when you implement it on actual hardware, if you are using it to drive an autonomous vehicle or if you're using it to figure out the optimal charging profile of a battery pack, you have to make sure that you are within the constraint. Okay. And those constraints will be, com will be there because of the either engineering considerations or fatigue consideration or long-term benefit consideration or you can have like lots of consideration that tells you you cannot go beyond a certain point. Okay. Any other question? Yeah, sure. 
check whether we are outside or inside or whether to go uh, on the boundary inside. Correct. So there are uh, multiple cases would appear and therefore there are two general classes of algorithms that we'll be talking about, which is imitating the steepest descent. Uh, so we'll see what exactly that those two algorithms are trying to do. Okay. So could give us we need to find the biggest gradient in one direction and we need to move in the opposite direction and when we move to boundary, we need to find the the master close a gradient, yeah. gradient uh, uh, to the offset gradient. Right. Okay. So yeah, those are the two. Th so the algorithm will go in that, uh, in, will follow exactly that logic, but the way to write it mathematically is what I'll show you. OK. So algorithm one is conditional gradient method. In this method, I pick my x bar k to be argument. And then my xk plus 1 equals to xk plus alpha k x bar k minus xk. And then the second algorithm is gradient projection method. Here x bar k, xk minus alpha k gradient of no, this is sk. Okay, so what is this particular method trying to do? It's trying to find the point x, which is uh, which has the minimum value of this inner product, right? So this is the inner product, gradient of f x transpose d. What I'll do is I'll minimize this particular inner product. I'll get a point x bar k. I know that this x bar k is in the set capital X itself, right? Because that's by construction. And then I'm going to take a small step in the direction of x bar k minus x k. Okay, and that gets me to x k plus one. Now for this to make sense, remember this is a linear programming, I mean this is a linear function, right? So gradient of f x k, this is a vector transpose x. So this is a, a linear function, and hopefully optimizing over a convex set, if, you're, if you have to optimize a linear function over a convex set, hopefully that particular minimization is much, much easier to do in comparison to minimizing the function fx itself over the constraint set. Now we will study some algorithms for how to minimize a linear, uh, linear objective function over a convex set, so you can use those algorithms for solving this problem. Okay, but general, generally speaking, if you have a completely nonlinear function, uh, you can, what you can get is a sequence of linear programming problems. I mean, I'm, okay, maybe not a linear programming problem, but a linear objective function problem, which is comparatively easier to solve. 
you get x bar k and then you slide in the direction of x bar k minus x k. So that's algorithm number one. Algorithm number two is, I'll just go in the direction of negative gradient of f x k, okay, with a small step size s k. If I go outside the set, I'm going to project myself back into the set, okay? And then I'm going to take x bar k minus x k, I'm going to take a step alpha k in this particular direction, okay? Question? No. Okay. Yes. Why would you use one or the other? If this operation is easy to do, you pick this algorithm. If this operation is easy to do, you pick this algorithm. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> like, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So we haven't talked about you know, the projection, but uh, we saw the projection of negative c onto a subspace ax equal to zero. So if my convex set was ax equal to zero, I exactly know how to solve this particular problem. No, I know how to solve this particular problem in that case, because I know what the projection of this vector is onto the set ax equal to zero. We have it in the form of some matrix inverse and the matrix multiplication. So hopefully the matrix inverse will not be a problem. If it is 20, 30, 40 dimensional, it's probably not a problem. For some other uh, uh, functions, we will, for some other uh, sets, we will try to study projection, perhaps in the next class, like what are the projection formula for uh, other kind of uh, convex sets. And hopefully that will help us decide whether we need to solve this problem or whether we need to solve this problem. Let's try to solve this problem in the context of some convex set. Should I erase this side? Maybe I'll erase that side. I want to minimize C transpose X such that norm of X is less than equal to R square. So I have a sphere and I want to minimize C transpose X over the sphere. What do you think is the optimal solution? C is a vector, yeah, the gradient of fxk transpose. That's the same as C. Okay, I'm just giving it a name. I don't want to write like this long expression, so I'm just giving it a name C transpose, yeah. Um, it should be like in the direction of C to the next star. Uh, kind of, sort of. Or the opposite. Opposite direction, yeah, right. right. Okay, so this is minus C over norm of C. Uh, times uh, R. That's the optimal solution. So if this was a sphere, I can actually solve this problem very easily. Can you expand this result a little bit? To me, it's kind of like if you multiply it, it's negative identity. So you have negative c. Yeah. I'm going to divide it by the norm of c so that this is a unit vector, and I'm going to multiply it by r. So it becomes a vector within this particular set. Yeah, if you substitute this x star back into the equation you want to minimize, right. is, uh, so what will you get minus 1 multiplied by r? I mean, we probably will also get a norm of C or, yeah, minus, so C transpose X star. I don't know why this is important, but this is what we will get. That's the value of the function. This thing. How do you get that part? You have the... Okay, one. let's... Minus C transpose C over norm of C. R. This is right. It's a negative value. Okay. Remember that the gradient of f x transpose 
direction D has to be a negative value. So we get something negative. Okay, so in this case, uh, this particular, uh, evaluating this particular X bar K is very, very easy. Uh, we have already seen projection onto a subspace. Uh, what I can do is tell you what the projection onto a box set looks like, which is also fairly easy. Uh, the only comment I want to make right now is if you are standing, if your x, xk is a stationary point, then this particular inner product can be non-negative. Okay? Because remember, that's the definition of a stationary point. And then it becomes a candidate for, uh, for a local minimum because it satisfies the first order necessary condition for optimality. So whenever you are solving this problem, you want to make sure that the term, the value, at the optimal point is supposed to be negative. Okay, only then you are descending, otherwise you are not descending. So that's the only caveat here in this particular algorithm. You want to make sure that this term is uh, negative, only then it's a valid uh, descent step, otherwise if it is turning out to be positive or zero, then it means you are already standing at a potential local minima, and uh, and so you can give that out as a solution, as a potential solution for the problem. And in this case, uh, you will come back. Once you figure out x bar k, it turns out that x bar k equals to x k itself, in which case you're not moving in any direction. And then you know that you are already at a potential minimum, potential uh, local minima. So that's the only part you need to remember. Now I'll give you the projection onto the box set. So my set is A less than equal to X less than equal to B. I have a point Z. So the, the projection onto this particular set is AI if zi is less than or equal to ai and bi if zi is greater than or equal to bi and it zi if zi is equal to if yeah zi is in ai and bi This is projection onto a box set. So this is my set. This is called box. So I have a minimization problem over a box set. Turns out that the projection is extremely simple and straightforward. If the ith element of the projection is equal to ai, if the ith element of z is less than or equal to ai, if it is greater than or equal to bi, then this is bi itself. And if it is between AI and BI, then this is ZI itself. You can write a very simple code, look at every element of Z, see if it satisfies the inequality, and you can output what the projected point is going to be. So if this is the set, uh, if, this is, if you're optimizing over this set, gradient projection makes perfect sense, because this projection operation is extremely straightforward. So, yeah. Yeah, for any, so for this particular f of x, uh, you can either pick conditional gradient method to solve it, if, if your set looks something like this. So it's very easy to compute the optimal solution. Or you can use this method if projection turns out to be a simple solution. Projection onto sphere is also very straightforward. So z. onto sphere, well, I don't want to co cover it in this class. So here is what I'll do. In the next class, I'll talk about how to compute projection onto various different sets. And uh, so we'll see how, how complicated this particular uh, projection is, how much computationally demanding this projection is. And then we'll talk about how to pick alpha k 
in these two situations and how to pick SK in these two situations. So that will be the content for the next class, which is going to be on Monday. Thank you and have a great weekend. This station point for constraint case. If this is x bar and this is x star, or we should say no. This this is x star. And this oh is oh, this should be x bar. Right. This should be x bar. Okay. Yeah yeah. yeah. Sorry. Okay. Just give me a second. I need to erase things because there is a class right after this. You have a quick question or a long question? Oh, oh. Right. Yeah. How did we get to this? Minus C by, um, in the denominator? Like uh, that expression for optimal X? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. It's going to take some time. Just give me a second.